Well, you guys might be wondering where on earth am I and who is this? This is Ty. Hello, guys. Ty is an expert in, uh, should, we, should we say biotopes? Biotope. Biotope style. Yeah, and maybe freshwater habitats. Yes. So Ty's been all over the world, haven't you? Under the water, literally with like special cameras, photographing it, filming it, documenting it. You, you know about it. You know how to do it. He knows how to replicate it. And today we're going to be doing that in one of these tanks. Sort okay. of. We're doing a jungle tank, which isn't a biotope. That's true. Okay, yeah. So true biotope is like biotope is like everything has to be from the specific region, yeah. like yeah. everything which is just unachievable, let's be honest. Unless you've gone there and picked it up, it brought is. it in your suitcase. I think the tank that we're doing, it's more about volume of plants, creating a really great habitat for the fish. Yeah. So we're choosing the plants that we like from wherever they are in the world, that are gonna look fantastic, gonna give us loads of impact. Yeah. And the fish are just gonna be really happy in there. They're gonna look great as they would in the wild. When you see them, they're, they're fully colored up. They're totally happy because they hang around habitat, which has got areas they can hide in. Yeah, and you've seen you've seen fish more in the wild than you have anywhere else, I guess. Pretty much. I mean, I've spent a lot of hundreds and hundreds of hours in Brazil in the Pantanal wetlands filming underwater. Yeah. I've also been lucky enough to film in, in the Philippines. I've collected stiffodon gobies in mountain rivers in the Philippines. Um, I've looked at fish from a distance in Botswana and Zambia because the water's full of crocodiles. Um, I've explored hello, uh, <laughs> reefs and mangrove systems in Australia. I don't know if you saw that, the cat's coming. <laughs> yeah, it's my, it's my little Brazilian cat. She's yeah. kind of, she wants to be involved. Yeah. Um, and I've explored habitats in Costa Rica and Colombia and Peru in the Peruvian Amazon as well. So. Okay, so I'll be popping all of this up over the top so you guys can uh, see it all. But you know, you, you, but you do spec, you do know about creating those biotopes, and you you actually releasing a book in 2031, aren't you? It feels like <laughs> <laughs> apparently it's it coming. Com it's apparently, coming. it comes out late late summer this year. Uh, Aquatic habitats, aquariums inspired by nature. Yep. Um, which I've done with my. Tell them how many setups you did. I did 96 displays, <laughs> but 62 have gone into the book. I did that with my friend and colleague Jane, uh, George Farmer. Yep. And. It's biotopes from all around the world, but it's not just a step-by-step -step book. It's also loads of information about the habitat, yes. the natural, but also the social history. So I have to see what the editor lets me keep, but I've got all sorts of stories about the people that live in those places, the way that the environment operates, the kind of habitat, the way that the fishes use that habitat. Yeah. And then you've got that information for when you want to create your own world in yeah. this glass box. Yeah, yeah. And you've got the greater context for it. Which is like, like you're saying, like we're not doing a biotope, but but uh, Thai style is a lot more, a lot more simple, hard scale. It's actually very beginner friendly, isn't it? Dave always says, and Dave from Aquarium Gardens, <laughs> even Thai, you've got to put some hardscape in there. Like, <laughs> do I? I that, that means I'll have less space for plants. plants. Yeah, yeah. And you know, he's right that the hardscape is kind of your bare bones. If you don't have it, you'll miss it. Doesn't matter if it gets covered in plants. Mm, no, I see what you mean. But I do try and go plant heavy, partly because I believe that's a, a real formula for success with a planted tank. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Plant that's mass what I say that. reduces I say that. algae. Yeah, start with start with a lot as well. But also because you know when I've explored habitats, the kind of small fishes that most of us keep in the aquariums, where do they hang out? In the cover, in amongst the plants. They look great. They're really coloured up. They feel well, secure. Like a few rocks and a few twigs coming up, and then yeah, yeah more or, like know, that style. Something I typically see is like an entire fallen tree, just fallen into the river, and then over time the current has pushed substrate up against this tree. Oh, okay. That creates a deep bed, that also contains kind of organic material, detritus, and because there's this deep bed, plants can establish themselves in it. So it's like own little island paradise yeah, like under a, the river. Yeah, a bank of, of Literally dense what plants. we create as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's where you'll go and find those small, you know, the open water, they're often not hanging out there because there's too many predators. You go into the plants, you start seeing these little fish kind of through the yeah, plants yeah, and looking yeah. at you. And I'm looking at the fish now and they're doing exactly what you just said. <laughs> yeah, they feel secure, you know. Um, and I, I've got a real, you know, I know a lot about fish, but I have a real passion for the plants. Yes. Uh, we've got some rare ones here. Yeah, we'll, well. Sh we'll show some of those. But yeah. I think I love, you know, you come down every day, maybe there's a new leaf, a new stem, there's a flower. Mm. There's always something to I reward think that's, you I for think that's it. why I like plant tanks as well, because they're changing regularly. Yeah. But I, I've got a salt water, which I enjoy. Yeah. But there's, there's nothing changing day to day. It's much more slow. The evolution it, is yeah, yeah. slower pace. No, and I think, you know, the, the 
this whole thing about biophilia, you know, get out into nature, try and surround yourself with green space. We can't all do that, certainly not all the time. Mm. But if you can bring some of that greenery and that life into your home, mm. even in a small tank, I'm yeah. sure that does you a world of good. Yeah, I mean, I don't think of it that way. I, I think it more just is fun. But, that too. But it's probably that happening too. without me, you know, yeah. focusing on that specific, what was the word you said? I got biophilia. Biophilia, okay. But I, I, think, I think that's it. You're doing it because it's fun. There's mm. all these other benefits that come with it. There's also the reward of, you know, you get to play God. You create, <laughs> yeah, it's, you create this it's world the Sims in, in yeah. fish tanks. But <laughs> unlike the Sims, you know, if you give it your role and you love the fish and the plants, they will really do better. Mm. They'll yeah, have better, yeah. better quality of life. They'll yeah. look better. That's that's why I only keep fish I like, not what YouTube would do well with. Do you okay, know what I mean? Okay, so you really go for what be, you want. Yeah, because if I have something there that I'm not that into, but I know will do well, yeah. then how long before I'm going to be like, oh, I'm just going to let the tank go. If you're not everything. passionate about it, you can't there's no do it. point. It's impossible. No, it's impossible. I think all, all the fish and plants that I've got are really things that I, I mm. want. Yeah. And, or I'm, I'm trying to learn something about them because I haven't kept them before. Yeah. But I do it for the love of it and, and because, as you say, it's fun. Yeah. So, and that's what we'll be doing. We'll be doing a fun project today. Yes. We'll get started in a second. Let me, let me show you all these tanks. Sure. Wow. <laughs> Look at Plantville. That looks so cool. So this is a traditional, if you like, jungle tank. Yes. And for me, the best jungle tank ever done was done by George Farmer years ago. And he put it into Practical Fishkeeping magazine. I f fell in love with it instantly. And it really defined my my style, my philosophy on this, which is tons of tons of plants, loads of cool textures, make an amazing habitat for the fish. I have to say, like you know, George, to be fair, was literally that and Green Machine. But Green Machine to me felt, for those who don't know, it's like full CO2 ADA in the yeah, UK. Yeah. Because, should we say? Yeah, yeah. And it felt a little bit unachievable. But some of the stuff I've seen George do, you know, with his crips and with his simple stuff. It's what yep. actually got me into giving it a go. Yeah. You know, back then, which was like five years ago, four years ago, whenever I searched Planted Tank, it came up because you know there wasn't a huge amount going on. No, he's he's been fundamental to many elements of the hobby, I think. And uh, and then it, and then a few months later, he was in my shed. Well, there you go. <laughs> How things happen. Yeah. And this, so what, we've got some cool Colombian tetras here. Yeah. Still juvenile. That's a good size one. So we got. Um, the Colombians, we've got these guys, which are a bycatch, so I don't actually know what they are, but they look similar to the Colombians. So I've kept them together and they seem to be quite happy. I've got penguin tetras, which are always a you know firm favorite, but this is actually the first time I've ever kept them. Okay. And the reason I got them is because I've got these really rare fish. They're called Pirulina oh, yeah. australis. And this is a species I've spent a lot of time studying they in killing? Brazil. They're, um, they're related to the sort of splash tetra group. Okay. Oh, okay. And yeah. I, I spent hours and hours watching them in Brazil, filming them, and I got them, and they're super feisty and aggressive. <laughs> and they were bullying anyone who goes up near the top. Penguin tetras are quite feisty themselves. Yeah. So I put them in, and actually they've all evened out because they can't bully each other. Right, yeah, a bit like when you overstock uh, cichlids. Yeah, so they're, they're chilled, which is great. Another classic, neon tetras. Yeah. Which is that, was that an epistogram or just Yeah, okay. so there's epistogramma uh, mcmasteri, and yeah. sadly, two weeks ago, I lost my male, which was a stunning, massive fish. And I think it was just old. Right. I still got the female. So I went to Ely Aquatics and Reptiles, who really helped me with loads of fish. And Joe there, she gave me a new male. So he's gone in and he's super shy. So you might see him <laughs> fly past. And that might have been the one because it was very colored up or is the female colored up as well? She's really colored up. Oh, okay. There's also some uh, rainbow emperor tetras. And if they might come out if I very quickly drop some food in, we'll get an absolute feeding frenzy going. We'll just drop a few different pellet and granule foods. And <laughs> you can see, it's like piranha. Oh, bumblebee goby, yeah? That's um, uh, pandagara. Pandagara, sorry. Yeah, I, I always get them confused. I know, when you see them, you're like, oh, it's a massive... Yeah, um, I, yeah I know that it's pandagara. So, it's silly well, of me. There's, I used to um, look after Colombian tetras when I worked at London Zoo in the aquarium. And that kind of gave me a real love for them. And yeah, I keep I love coming back to them, as well. and so here they are. I had a group like, you know, a bit bigger than this, and uh, with tons of fish, I had an Amazon tank, and they were huge, they get big, bright yeah. orange top. And then all of a sudden there was babies as well. So oh, even, in, even in a high stocking, they still did well. But Ty, people are going to be interested, I reckon, anyway. I yeah. was, what is this? What is this lily? This is Nymphaea gardneriana. 
It's a, a lily from principally from Brazil and it's a carpeting lily. So it produces little runner plants yep. and they pop up. Um, and it's super, super rare. You can't really get it anywhere anymore, but I'm I'm working on bringing it into the UK hobby so it'll be more available to people. Yeah, yeah, it's Because amazing. it's a great plant. And um, as I showed you earlier, under high light, it goes bright red, really deep pink. Low light goes green, but it's a beautiful plant. And You're going to have to let me steal some. <laughs> well, that is on the cards, don't yes. worry. Yes. That's on the cards. And also, I just want to point out, look, this isn't some fancy rimless tank or anything. No. This is the Aquatropic 160, which is a, a Maidenhead tank. Yeah. And really kindly sponsored to me by Maidenhead Aquatics at Woodbridge. And the only thing I've done to upgrade it, yeah. there's some twin star lights in here these are old version ones the e model i think uh dave at aquarium gardens sort of getting rid of them let me have them and so that's really helped my plant growth i run co2 on here but not at a crazy amount yeah and i'm using tropical soil and it it works it works really charm looks great cool let's have a look at the so let's go to the left yeah in case you're wondering we are in Ty's garage. Yeah. <laughs> My creative space. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, oh, let me, oh, got to adjust the lighting on this one. Here okay, so this is this is what I was talking about with, uh, you know, sort of less hardscape. Yeah. This literally looks like some trunks of wood have fallen into the river. And like you say, it's created an area for life to sort of flourish. Well, it's interesting. This, this particular piece was at Aquarium Gardens for months and I kept eyeing it. And I asked <laughs> Dave to put it aside for me. And he very kindly sponsored it for me in the end because I found these other bits. Yeah. I was playing around with them in the shop and I realized you create this kind of W shape, which sort of flowed, but looked natural, like you yeah, might yeah. find in a river. It's actually harder to create something that looks natural than people think. Yeah. Because a lot of the time it stays flat, but sometimes that can be perfect as well, can't it? Yeah, so, I mean, it's experimenting and playing around. Um, Look at this Echinodorus. So this is rare, isn't it, Ty? Yeah, this is Echinodorus macrophyllus, which is very rare. You can actually get it from Wildwoods World of Water in Enfield. You can order it from them, but it only comes in every now and then, and it's quite unusual. I've got three of them, and uh, they did appear in the book, and they can go, I'll send you that photo again, you yeah. can go this amazing pink color in the wild. And I've, I've filmed them in Brazil, collected them out there. I've got more of the carpeting lily, the Gardneriana. Oh, you've got to keep it growing every you can. The idea is that it's going to fill this whole tank. Um, I've got another really rare plant, Halanthium angustifolia. So it's like a really tall helanthium. Okay. And this is also from Wildwoods in Enfield. It doesn't grow anywhere near as fast as all the other helanthiums, but it's, it's really tall, up to 40 centimeters, yeah. really slim. It reminds me of my dwarf, dwarf sage, to be honest. Yeah, it's similar. <laughs> then I've got some um, Cobomba ficata, the pink Cobomba. Yeah. It looks a little tired because I've just moved it around and it's right. recovering. It's like, oh. It's doing all right though. It's getting then there. There's, you can see uh, Ludwigia inclinata. This is another really rare plant. You can get it from Wildwoods Enfield, but you can also get it from Mainhead Aquatics Woodbridge. They can order it in for you. And it's a stunning plant from Brazil that I've filmed a lot, I'll send you some clips. It, it, the red in the wild is just out of this mm. world. The sun, isn't it? Tropical you can, sunlight, you, you can't, can't beat it. Yeah, exactly. Um, there's some Persicaria um, Pretamissa, which uh, my friend from Austria, the more Elias. Longly yeah, yeah, he gave me that, which is a really nice plant. And then there's this beautiful Myriophyllum rorima, which is another rare plant, which I said I'm going to get to you. It's lovely yes. red, uh, orangey colors. Sweet. So these are all fish and plants that I've encountered in Brazil in the Pantanal wetlands. So we've got the sedge tetras, Iphisobrichonilakis, which are one of my favorites. Have they got another name? Um, they're often mislabeled as kitty tetra. I think I'm They're not yeah. kitty tetras. Okay. Um, there's some Rathbun's tetras with the, the green and the orange or red belly. Yep. That's then cool. That's cool. There are black neons in here. Yeah. Uh, which, you know, firm favorite. Another fish I've spent a lot of time studying in the wild. It's a bunch of autosynclus. Yep. There's a pair of Epistogramma trufasciata. Which we won't see. <laughs> no, <laughs> they'll be around at some point. Yeah. That's another species I've, I've filmed in the wild. And then Epistogramma borelli, which I've also collected. And then one of my absolute favorites, the Serpe Tetra. Yes. Equis, which is what we're planning on for. Which is going in our jungle tank, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, well, let's, uh, let's come over to this area so we yeah. can... Okay, so this is this is proper jungle style, isn't it? It will grow in more. Yeah, this is... I'm trying to experiment more, more with stems and 
as eventually you won't see any of that black background. Yeah. But I just wanted loads of textures, lots going on, lots of quite vivid and yet soft textures to it. Is there hardscape? There is hardscape. <laughs> no, don't, don't worry. I'm the same. Everyone always moans. Like, What's the point of putting hardscape in? You're well, just going to cover it anyway. There's Boost of Philandra, Java Moss, and Java Fern on the hardscape. Yeah. Um, there's some cool boosters. I've got uh, this like super blue one that that came from Main Head Aquatics at Woodbridge. It's, and... like, it's like I always say. It's like the hardscape's purely there as a framework for me to put plants exactly, on. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. There's some cool Crypticorn, uh, yeah, Crypticorn nice. Cordata via Siamensis, Crypticorn. Um, Maiden Rosen or Rosen Maiden, which is really cool. Then great textures, it's so varied, yeah. so varied. I, just, I love that. I just wanted to fill it with soft, fluffy stuff. <laughs> yeah, but the, the fish would feel happy in there. So yeah, there's yeah. Um, green cabomba in there. It's Mirafilum sp Guyana. Yeah, Limnophila aquatica. Quite cool from the top. I love that angle because you've got like double. Yeah, double view. And then oh, we um, should say, look, ADA light. So yeah, Whoa. this is my. I, I got, Indulgence. I got this at trade, so that's how I managed to get hold of that one. I've got a, I've got three ADA lights. That's the only one that's a big one. They're smart. I like them. They, well, they look really good. Um, you know what? I've got my Chihiros uh, lighting. These are the Vivid twos. twos. Yeah. These are from Riverwood Aquatics. Really kindly, Pete there. He sponsored me one of them. Okay. I love the lighting that they do. I think it's great, and yeah. because you can fiddle and change. Yes. Yeah. There's lots you can do. The ADA gives you that ADA look. It that does, green, doesn't it? That like, saturated look. Yeah, it's the it's like a almost a luminous green. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? George, for example, he doesn't like it, but I. I, don't I think know. it can work. It depends what you're doing. Like yeah. I think I think you put the ADA light on what you're going for here, and it ruins it. Yeah, you'll only get green. But it works well for this style of the tank. Well, this tank's you know lots going on. Um, fish wise, there's the rosy tetras. These are from. Uh, one of my local maidenheads. There's the Amapensis tetras, Hypersubrachian Amapensis. And then you can just see hiding, because it's the most expensive fish in the tank, a little red one at the back. That's Hypersubrachian SP Moselle cherry. <laughs> and there's eight of them in here. For sure, it's not just an Ember tetra, Ty. It, it, it's funny <laughs> you should say that. My friend Ian was here yesterday. Yeah. He went, those are just expensive embers. <laughs> yeah, 20 pound of fish. Is it? But they're, they're quite rare, they're quite beautiful. To be fair, he's that vibrant and not completely the light, so I can only ima well, imagine him under the Chihiros. That I know. He'd be glowing. I know. Uh, there are eight of them in here. Really? Um, yeah, I know. <laughs> you would not know it, but um, oh, the, I'm really trying now to see. They, one. They're also from uh, Ely Aquatic Groups and Reptiles, which is one of my absolute main supporters, and I'm really lucky because Joe there orders me things that I ask for, and uh, she's really helpful. Still so, one tie. This, this just one. This. Let's say that the others in the back breeding. Oh, okay. We'll, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so we'll leave them to it. In there. um, there's other shrimp in here, obviously. Yeah. And I love to fill my tanks with all kinds of shrimp, cherries. Yeah, the more little things, the better. I exactly. Yeah, Always something catches else your up. eye. Yeah. And um, I'm not noticing snails, though. Are you not a snail I, I've got fan? snails. Oh, there's one. The there's snails one. are all in the big tanks. I've got the Sulawesi okay. snails. Oh, yeah. The big. Big Sulawesi snails. I've got zebra snails, and then in the jungle tank, there's uh, these wizard snails. Wizard snails. Yeah, you can't see it, but these guys are quite. No, that's a, that's not a wizard snail. No, right. That's a no. There's an airite. There's another airite. There is a wizard snail in here. Wizard snail. And I swear you're just making. This no, is a prank, isn't no, no, it? No, 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 no. <laughs> they're called that because apparently their shell looks like a wizard's hat. <laughs> yeah, I know. But what's actually beautiful about them is that their their body, their fleshy body is black covered with um, gold specks. Okay. There's water on here, I don't know why. Um, and I'm sure you can find a photo of one somewhere. But I'll insert that now. When when you look at them on the glass... No, no to edit it. Oh, no, that's me. They're, they're really beautiful. But yeah, this tank is, is sun snails. Then the last tank in here... Yeah. Is, <laughs> this is my sort of tribute to 1990s Takashi Amano style. Yeah, like, like the old school nature aquarium Yeah, nature style. aquarium. Rickia, uh, Potomithetan gayi, which is a plant that's really gone out of fashion in the last 20 years, but is actually amazing, great for beginners. Yeah. Grows very fast. It reminds me of Stellatus, is it? S sort of. It, it's, it just has these long, lovely, soft tendrils. And yeah, that, the fine texture yeah. of Stellatus, like those thin needle leaves. Yeah. Grows really quickly. Once you've got it, you never get rid of it. <laughs> 
there's glosser in here, yeah. hair grass. I, I am so amazed that you haven't just populated the whole tank with the Ricky and that, yeah. It's only been running for about three weeks. Oh, okay, yeah, there's this still tank, time. There's still time. It will happen. And then I've got another rare plant in here, which was given by my lovely friend uh, Elias in Austria, which is Eric Howlon Feather Duster. And um, you'll be getting one of those okay. as well. Which one? I can't see. Which... This thing that looks like ultra thin vallis. Oh, okay, I you see. You look at yeah, it yeah. back here. So it's a really delicate plant. I've actually just chopped it back because oh, okay. it, it took over. So it sends runners? It grows from a rhizome. So it's got a central rhizome, but the rhizome really? just expands. So you okay. get one plantlet, and then if you pull it out six months later, the rhizome's like wow. half, half the size of your fist. Okay, cool. So this is, I did this tank because I wanted to do something different from what I would normally do. I just wanted a challenge. There's some green neons in here who are being really shy because, you know, they're on camera. <laughs> There's classic green neon. They, yeah. <laughs> I'm never keeping them again because you don't see them. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, we did a tank for my book. I'll give you a photo. We put 150 of them in there <laughs> in a 120 shallow tank yeah. done as a Venezuelan uh, modishal biotope from the Orinoco Basin. And they looked amazing. And they were all out because there were just so many of them. There was no, nowhere to go. Yeah, there's, yeah, they couldn't not be out. But they looked fantastic. But they're one of my firm favorites. I want to get some more in this tank so that they're more confident. Yeah. But I just think, you know, under the ADA light here, that kind of green, yellowy green vibe. They look great and yeah, they're easy, they're delightful. But I do appreciate they can be camera shy. So, <laughs> yeah, and you look, it's when you get the camera. Like, yeah, yeah. If, if you're oh, online, no, they're if fine. We were sitting down, yeah. they'd be out and about, yeah, they'd be yeah. dancing for us. Yeah. And I guess, I don't know if we, you want to show it already. Yeah, of course you can. The tank that we're doing today, this is a Wazi Scape Line 60, yep. which is really kindly sponsored by Wazi to do setups with biotopes and other features. Yep. And we've got the Vivid WRGB2 Chihiro yes, Slide. Yep. This was loaned to me by Pete at Riverwood Aquatics. So I'm very grateful to him for that. Um, filter? Filter is a Wazi Biomaster Thermo 350. Yep. Okay. Which is nice and mature already. Pipework, I've got the Aqua Rio. Um, Oh yeah, the, the it looks, one. Yeah, it looks a bit white because I've just bleached it again and yeah, it goes fine. a bit brittle. You won't even see it when the plants are Once the plants are in, we won't see it, exactly. And let's, let's show them this just because it's, okay. it's quite interesting. This is... Obviously not a fish tank, but... Not a fish tank. I forgot the brand. I'll have to move my editing suite. <laughs> Sorry, glasses and wood. Um, so this is a sort of little jungle project that I just wanted to have a go. And we'll get the four on there, it should come on. So I just put mosses, java fern, some hydrocotyl, some bromeliads, um, the creeping fig, the ficus columbiana. Oh, yeah. This is java fern, which is really loving it in here. Yeah, well, it's a, it, it grows out of water until the yeah. floods come, doesn't yeah. it? So, And there's no livestock in here. I just wanted to have a go doing something different. So I made it with um, the Wazi pond foam, expanding oh, foam. Yeah. I made a 3D background onto egg crates and then I, as it was drying, pushed a piece of wood into it ah, okay. and it's got like a false bottom. So there's a little pump at the back and it's, yes. there's a small waterfall that just keeps it dripping constantly. So basically you wanted a little slice of the rainforest yeah. there yeah. and you have created it. Yeah. <laughs> I and, love um, that, the way it actually flows down, the oh, mister. It, it works really well. This is um, a reptile fogger. By oh, it's, like, it's a proper product. Zoom it's Ed. not yeah, like yeah. a yeah. Um, so I use that on a timer. Comes on every four hours for five minutes. Or okay. The moss looks amazing. Yeah, it's it's really happy. Very and um, I just I love this moment when you when you have this thing, and then you wait for the fog to fill up, <laughs> and you get that kind of complete cloud, and then when you open it and it all wafts woof, out. I think that's so rewarding. <laughs> just looks really cool. Yeah, but, like um, it. Yeah. So this is sweet. Creating creating worlds in glass boxes. I well, think it's that's my every thing. single one of them is fantastic in its own way. Thank you. If I had to pick a favourite, it mm. would definitely be this one over here because I, it's looks it looks done. It's complete. Do you know what I mean? I agree with you. And actually, I this is the one where you know the fish are just confident. They're happy. There's always something to look at. What I love that though is the the amount of different textures so yeah. you, you know just like for instance this massive echinodorous leaf here yeah looks great 
And then you've got more sort of, you know, Fine details. finer stuff on the bottom. You know, you've got some Java fern there, but then you've got the deep red of that Echinodorus behind it as well. It's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's full on, there's loads of stuff. So that is the end of the tour. After this, me and Tide went on to create a jungle style aquarium. So if you're interested in that, make sure you subbed. And also if you're interested in like natural style aquariums, but also fish in the wild and interesting stories, you can take a look at Ty's channel as well. I leave a link in the description, Biotopia. I've been watching it for years, to be honest. I even told Ty that I'd messaged him quite a few years ago and uh, he didn't see it, but never mind. <laughs> this is when I only had like a thousand subs on YouTube. Yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this one. I'll see you on the next one.